Hey guys, welcome back to A-Level Lessons. Alright, in the previous part of Vectors, we covered on part 1 the very very basic stuff that you guys should already know by now. Uh, I think that should have just been more to refresh your memory a little bit. Uh, we're going to be moving on to the next part, part 2 in this video. Covering a little more complicated stuff, right, that I think some of you guys may be struggling a little more with. Of course, it's not as bad as planes. I think planes is definitely the killer for most of you guys. But we're going to be looking at lines. Right? We're going to be looking at everything about lines, what is a you know, a, a good concise summary of lines that you should have uh, in your pocket with you so that if ever you're unsure, you can just flip to these notes uh, and, and be like, oh, that's what I missed out. All right, so let's look through a bit of lines. So uh, in, in the case of vectors, okay, a vector line is basically just kind of like from one point to another, right? Just think of it as um, you're running from, let's say, your house to school, right? So what is this line that you're going to be traveling right this this vector uh, quantity over here all right so for lines uh, you guys need to take note that lines follow a general formula right all lines tend to follow this formula r is equals to a plus lambda b right this is like i think an infamous uh you know equation that every one of you should have heard of or most probably in be ingrained in your head now so let's just go through what the individual components are because i know a lot of you guys are like oh what do they actually stand for all right so r over here, it actually represents any point that lies on the line, right? So if you're trying to find a point that lies on the line, let's say you're trying to find point C, right? You can try to sub it into this value R, all right? What is A? A is usually a given point on the line. So this usually would be given. If it's not given, it's for you to find. Right, usually they should give you enough values for you to be able to find this. Uh, lambda, of course, is just a, a constant. It, it's kind of like a variable as well. Right, B, of course, would be our direction vector. So this is important, right? Because why? When you look at vectors, vectors, unlike scalar quantities, have a direction. So if there's a line, for example, from your house to your school, you have to be able to know which direction it's headed towards. Right, so direction vector. How do you find this? You can actually use two points on the line to find. Right, so it's actually quite simple to find, right? You just need to have two points. Alright, so before we jump into like, you know, um, all that kind of length of projection, shortest distance kind of stuff, let's go through some of the, sh the questions that can usually come out, right? So maybe you can have a good question bank over here. So Usually in the case of factors, right, papers, they love to set all of these show questions, right? So there are some scenarios, let's list them out. The first one, they want you to show that a point lies on the line R equals to A plus lambda B, right? So how do we actually go about doing this? Very, very simple. You just need to sub the position vector of point R and solve for the unique remember these are showing questions right so you're trying to prove something right unique values of lambda to prove right so what you'll find is that you get a unique set of values for lambda once you have this unique set of values easily you, you can prove that this point actually lies on the line right so uh if you guys need you know clarification on this leave a comment i'll do a question on this uh to show you guys but i think you guys should know how to do this it. like the very very basic kind of like one two mark kind of questions that you should know all right the next one would be to show that a point lies on a plane right i know we've not covered planes yet Right, but let's just write all the show questions over here since we are already at it. Um, let's say r dot n equals to a dot n. So how would you go about doing this? Actually, it's not very hard as well. You just need to sub the position vector of the point, right? Whatever this point over here is, into r on the left hand side. L H S is left hand side. And very simple, after this it's just your left hand, right hand rule, you just need to check that 
fm side equals to rh side check right so just make sure that your left hand side is equivalent to the value of your right hand side right? usually a dot n over here would usually be what we call a determinant so there will usually be a fixed value over here so you just need to prove that both values tally up if they tally up you can prove whatever this uh, point is that it lies on the plane all right the third one will be to show that a line so back to lines again uh, line r equals to a plus lambda b lies on the plane r dot n equals to a dot n all right so how do you do this it's quite simple you just need to sub r of the line so it's the whole thing right this whole thing over here has to go in over here all right sub the uh, onto r or into r for the plane and this would happen on your left hand side as well right it's all happening over here and after this it's just the same thing right just check that your left hand side is equivalent to your right hand side and you should be able to get that proven answer over there right so in general quite a simple part also shouldn't be too much of an issue so these will be for your show questions right i think you guys uh, should be quite okay with this Alright, so just a bit on angles, let's move on to angles, right? If it's too fast, just feel free to pause the video or slow it down, alright? Uh, angles. Right, in general, for lines, when we try to find the angle between line 1 and line 2, how do we go about doing it? It's quite simple. We take the angle of cosine theta, whatever is between them, equivalent to B1 dot B2. Right, remember this is these are your direction vectors, right? If you guys don't remember what these are, it's your direction vectors of the two lines. You just dot them together, perform scalar product over here, over the magnitude of B1, B2. Right, so this is a general formula you should remember. Uh, I think it helps a lot. After that, of course, to find your theta, you can just cosine inverse the entire equation over here. Right, so this is just uh, how you can find your angles between two lines. Uh, later on, we'll cover more on like the lines, uh, angles between planes and between a line and a plane, so on and so forth. All right, so let's just wrap up this video now, okay? With one of the most most important parts when it comes to lines, we have got your diagrams, right? So you have got your diagram drawings, and this will usually involve the questions on your length of projection. or alternatively the perpendicular distance or shortest distance. So um, let me just do a quick diagram over here. So usually this is what you guys would draw. So you have got this line of L over here. And let's say you have a value A, and it goes all the way to let's say a value of P. And this is N over here, right? Your, your normal over here. and if you guys want to find what your perpendicular distance is, it's basically going to be over here. And I'll give you guys a quick formula for this. It's actually just AP, this factor over here, cross uh, your direction vector right, of B. Right? If you guys forget where B is, B is here. It's whatever this line, the equation of this line, whatever the direction vector is. And the length of projection, just think of the length of projection as the shadow of AP, right? So the length of projection is going to be over here. And the formula for this is going to be AP dot your yeah, direction vector instead. Right, so actually perpendicular distance or shortest distance is just the opposite, right? You're just using the vector versus uh, vector product or scalar product. Scalar product is for length of projection. Vector product is for your um, perpendicular distance, right? Or shortest distance. Alternatively, if you want to find your length of projection first, then you find whatever this value of AP is and after that try and calculate the PN. You also can, right? It's just that it's a bit of a more tedious and longer way to do it, but definitely possible as well. All right, so that's all for this part on lines. Hope you guys did understand and did capture something. Uh, it's just a quick summary, like I mentioned. So make sure you guys jot this down on your notebook or something and uh, it will be good for you to always refer to when possible. Alright, so that's all for this part on part 2. If you did learn something, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. It's free uh, and you can always change your mind later if you don't want to, you know, subscribe anymore. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can always leave it in the comment section below. If not, stay tuned for part 3 
on planes will be coming out hopefully soon uh, may take a while uh, we'll see um, and if you guys really really want planes of course let me know in the comments and then I will try to get it out as soon as possible alright I'll see you guys in the next one have a good one bye bye